So what inspired you to create your own nonprofit? Um, I looked around at other nonprofits and I didn't see, you know, any innovation. Um, especially when it came to feeding people, I didn't see, you know, something that made me feel like it was something that I wanted to be a part of. It wasn't motivating, you know, it wasn't all inclusive, it wasn't championing the people. And so I just wanted to create something that was, you know, bigger than myself. How is your organization different from others? Uh, the first thing, uh, we're transparent. So, you know, when it comes to, you know, not only, you know, operations, but funding, you know, we're legal. We make sure we let people know what we're doing, you know, day to day, uh, which also speaks to our consistency. You know, we're not here, you know, once a quarter or, you know, three or four times a year. We're in the community every single day because that's what the people need, especially when we're talking about feeding people. Mm -hmm. I know that in your refrigerator you have like fruits and vegetables and stuff. Um, why why did you advocate those specific foods rather than others? Because that's what we don't have. So, mm -hmm. you know, Inglewood is a food desert mm -hmm. and so there's no, you know, consistent healthy access. And so first and foremost, you know, I don't want to, to to champion the things that I think the people need. I have to see what the problem is. And that's what philanthropy should be, it should be flexible with the need, because the need will always change. How has the pandemic affected you? It made me stronger, more resilient. It added another feather to my cap. Mm -hmm. When it comes to, to being a man of the people, I have to make sure that, you know, as the problem goes, I go. I have to make sure as the people go, I go. And so the pandemic, you know, only added another layer of trying to make sure that we take care of our people the right way. It just, all it did was expose those that, that don't mean well and, and start p giving more attention and resources to the people that are out here. So you were featured in the Ellen DeGeneres show, correct? That's correct. Okay, so how did you feel about that? It was amazing, but I, I truly you know, believe that I was going to be there one day. Mm -hmm. But the good thing about it is that no matter what, you know, right after I was there, the, the very, you know, I was in California, the very next morning we were here doing deliveries. And that's what means more to me is, you know, we were featured on the Ellen DeGeneres show because of the work we're doing in the community. So I have to make sure that that is always the highlight. Everything else is nice and it, and it, and it feels good, but what we're doing in the community is always gonna be the first thing on my mind. That's what's up. How has your organization changed the narrative of disparities and societal ills that the city of Chicago have? I mean, every, every city has ills. Every city has problems. And so, you know, it, it, it's not, when it comes to changing the narrative, we have to expose more of the, the good efforts. But when it comes to those good efforts, we have to make sure that we're being as consistent as, as the evil guy. If you're not as, as consistent as bad, then you're not going to win out. And so the reason why people are noticing what we're doing is because we're out here just as much as the bad stuff is out here. And there's still some good here, so I'm going to make sure that people see that.